Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Wish you a very happy and healthy Sunday morning over here from Helsinki, Finland. It's actually quite sunny, so I'm wishing that you have a nice sunny day as well. And I'm very embarrassed. I'm very frustrated as well because the MetaTrader 5 tutorial video that I uploaded yesterday night, I realized that all of the pop-up all the pop-up window, windows that I was looking at were not shown up on screen, which is kind of destroys the point of the video. So I'll have to record that at some point in time. No problem though, not a big deal. Uh, but when I get some more free time, I will record that video. Anyways, I also do want to remind everyone that all my programs are on sale for the rest of the month, which is another five, six days until the end of March uh, with the code year 20. That's 20% off on, on all my programs on all the payment plans, even all the way out to 10 months. Uh, the Trade Like Professional program, which is the all-encompassing technical analysis program that goes over risk management, position management, understanding underlying market dynamics, trading strategies, bonus modules, access into the members-only Discord community, and of course, access to two proprietary indicators as well. The Master Options program is is similar to that, both but with regards to the derivative products options, to be very clear, both of those programs are 35 hours plus long. And then the jewel indicators are quite literally just access to, to the jewel indicators with videos on how to use that uh, far cry difference from the other ones. So of course, I always wanna make sure that people understand, please, take advantage of my free stuff before you ever consider investing in any one of these guys as they're going to be way overkill for the majority of people. So make sure that, you know, it's for you. Uh, those, those programs are designed for people who want to do this in a more serious way, uh, typically as a living. So <clears throat> I'll let you self-select into that group. However, understand that it's, it's very important to me to grab the same sort of integrity or sorry, maintain the integrity of that group because most of the people who are in those programs in the, uh, in the members, this discord community are, you know, coming from that sort of frame. So Anyways, with that said, let's get into the actual uh, analysis, stop shilling, and talk about some goddamn magic internet money. And here we go. Bitcoin, let me actually get rid of this uh, alert right there. Not to, don't really know why I have that. Um, but Bitcoin uh, having a pretty weak closure yesterday. Uh, yes, we did close above all these moving averages, even above the 10 simple on the daily. Uh, you did see that we, you know, we came back down and tested at that, uh, at that drop down to 52 bucks. But right now, looking a little bit on the weaker side and uh, starting to morph into what could what could start to take on a more distributive um, tone, especially looking at our um, especially looking at our oscillators right now. Daily stokes are coming down and uh, and are getting and more importantly are getting out of the critical zone, which is typically where I, where I actually find an actual trade. Uh, daily RSI also confirming a rejection off the exponential yesterday, which this is in this is not really in like a trending zone right now, but. You know, if if it, uh, if I am looking for initial hints into a move uh, potentially, you know, originating, that's kind of what I'd uh, what I'd have my eyes on. Anyways, going over the twelve hour, the twelve hours is the one that I've been watching to kind of judge overall changes with regards to exponentials. Um, as you can see, the two hundred exponential has been the resistance. The twenty one exponential has been the support. We've been just basing off it, just just <laughs> just fucking around this range for the past really like two weeks. Uh, sorry, uh, past week or so. Um, since 15th of March, just basically basing off the 21 and getting resisted by the by the 200 exponential. And see right now, actually the 10 simple is now up and above price action. I'm sure a lot of people are going to call us a head and shoulders as well. It's not. A, 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 yes, I am actually a little bit bearish here, but uh, but I would not identify this as a head and shoulders. More importantly, the it you know it doesn't matter what formation you call it. I just want to be looking at this support right here and say, okay, well, we very obviously have the 21 exponential guiding support, uh, sorry, guiding price action right around 3960. And if that actually breaks, I'd be looking down somewhere right around 3900, which would have been the former breakout trend line and also the 50 exponential, uh, funnily enough, on the 12 hour total time frame. which more importantly, if you go back to the daily, will be the daily 21, which I don't want to be... I don't want to be bearish uh, in the more immediate time frames until the 21 exponential uh, moving average breaks. Of course, this brings up a whole different conversation of you know looking at the low time frames, medium time frames, high time frames, macro time frames. Um, for myself, this is all very preliminary stuff, very low time frame stuff. Uh, as far as the macro picture, nothing's changed in over a year. We're still in the downtrend. As far as the medium term picture, you could make the argument that this is overall constructive right now. However, if 3900 breaks, this would this would unravel, and I would not consider it constructive anymore i consider it more of of uh, of distribution going on over here and getting ready probably for a next move down um to 3850 3800 to share up um but of course uh right now it is the weekend it is sunday so price action really floaty and um i really don't like making trades over the weekend i do trade options over the weekend which i did put on a i did put on a small position yesterday i'll show right now let me just actually grab it on from my other screen one second um, there we go. I basically have the 4,000 straddle on and I'm short some out of the money calls. Let me bring this on over here. Okay. One second. And there we go. 
Um, okay, cool. Yes, yeah, so you can see that my far outs are actually uh, doing some nice PL right now. Again, very, 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 very small position uh, in the overall grand scheme of things. This is my streamer count after all, uh, but sh uh, but basically short the 4,000 straddle, um, short it for about 200 bucks, uh, 10 times, <clears throat> and uh, in short 15 of these uh, 4250 far outs. Um, for, I don't know, I sold this for like, I, I think a couple hundred bucks as well. Uh, so again, just kind of a decay game as we do make our way through this territory. And uh, whichever way that this guy breaks, if we do break below 39.50, I'm just going to sell the spot underlined and uh, and pull in the covered put, uh, and then keep those short calls just naked. Um, of course, if we break up uh, above 4,000, I'll do the opposite. I'll buy you know I'll buy the underline and uh, and keep the uh, and keep the short puts naked and do the covered call to the upside. So overall, uh, very easy trade to manage. And when we're kind of like right in the middle of the decision phase, it uh, it just makes it that much more clear. You know, below below 39.50. Put on the covered, uh, put on the covered put above four thousand. Put on the covered call, and and then just let the and then just let the, the decay work for you. Um, of course, it's not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Um, I didn't go over this strategy in the options tutorial uh, in the beginner options tutorial, um, just because well, it's, can only can only go over so much. We uh, I did the spread over there, which very 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 powerful strategy as well. Very basic too, but uh, but hey, you know, just because it's basic does not mean that it's not useful. I mean, everyone uses that strategy no matter what level you're at. Uh, so uh, while we're here, let's go on over, and I do want to check out the 12 hour also because uh, this chart has actually been getting price action pretty well. Uh, 12 hour Stokes still down, um, starting to get into the bearish control zone. We got 12 hour RSI being a little bit more mature than the daily RSI, trending well below the exponential. This is what I want to see on an actual move, uh, whereas the dailies kind of still a little bit more in the preliminary stages can really shift around uh, quite easily. And of course, because this is a weekend, I don't like to put all that much, um, you know, all that much uh, stress on price action. Uh, this is why I actually like to pay attention. If I am going to look at spot, I, li I like to look at the two day total time frame, which seems to get price action uh, more or less right on 24 seven markets, because I think it, you know, kind of accounts for the weekends essentially. And you can see the 50 exponential actually did provide resistance for the last two-day dildo that we saw uh, uh, that closed yesterday, not at 8 p.m. East, East Standard Time. You do see um, we have not had follow-through from this, what do you want to call it, a long-legged doji dildo on very low volume. So to me, this is this is kind of like a one-off. It's not really that important, actually. I don't really look at this to dictate direction. I am more looking at the exponentials, which the 50 exponential has been a major resistance for the past over a year. Uh, each and every time that we've gotten above it, it has not been long after that that Bitcoin essentially has a massive meltdown. Uh, this one right over here was the last time that we actually saw it. But of course, plenty of other times in the past uh, year, which we can go over right now. And it's the green moving average that I'm speaking about. It's a 50, by the way. The time before that was right here in September at 7,400, uh, spent about a, a couple days above and then crashed back down. The time before that was on the bull trap to 8,400 in August of last year and crashed back down below the 50 and back down to the low side of the range from 84 to 6. The time before that was right over here uh, on the run to 10,000 in uh, May of 20, of 2018 uh, to 10,000 and uh, break back down below the, the 50 right here and straight down to 6,000. And the time before that was getting the tops at uh, 12,000 right here and right here, double top and then down to 6,000. So has been pretty damn good. Um, it works until it doesn't work. And uh, the last, the this last one right here was actually not that, th I mean, this was obviously not that actionable. We did see a little bit of continuation with the next dildo, but eventually all, like, all these wicks just got bought up. Uh, we didn't have a move to the downside of the range, more importantly. So, do I mean, do we see a little bit of divergence in behavior? I mean, possibly, uh, but overall, you know, as long as we're resisting it, uh, that that is a resistance. And where is it coming in around? It's coming in around the same uh, around the same areas, a 12 hour, uh, 200 exponential, uh, right, right around 4,000. So again, the ranges are quite clear. 4,000 resistance, 3950, or sorry, 3900 support for the more, uh, for, for, for this formation. Obviously yesterday I was talking about some very low time frame action because well, it's, it was a fucking boring day, so why not? And uh, in this rising wedge actually has been broken to the downside. We saw that yesterday, um, a little bit after finished that video, uh, broke it right here, retested later on in the day, as you can see on this run, rejected by the 21. And I do consider this a retest of the broken trend line. And uh, now looking, looking like a little bit of more pressure down. We do see four hour stokes have fallen back on over a couple of snakes in between there, but starting to gain momentum. Actually four hour jewel was the, was the one to watch. And I completely missed this one yesterday. Someone called this out. 
in the uh, in the members discord community and he said hey the four hour jewel is actually given a nice resistance right now and while I would not take this signal myself I would you know if I was already in position I would I would have been adding right there is typically how I play these uh, but I don't start positions in that way but that that was a decent signal not certainly not a perfect signal so I always want to make sure that the people who have access to that indicator you know understand the differences between that because a perfect signal is I honest on a, on a higher time frame, I don't think I have an example of it failing yet. I don't want to say stuff like that because it's like, what if, you know, what if it's wrong? Um, but I, when it, when I actually think about it, I don't, I, I can't recall. Um, anyways, in the more preliminary, uh, areas, we do have support coming in right around 39 50 ish area. Um, and more importantly, uh, this rising wedge technically does have a measured move to be made. Although I really don't trust measured moves on, uh, on, on wedges, but technically speaking, it would be pointing to the downside of this rising trend line that we've been walking up since, uh, middle of February of this year, um, getting one, two, three major lows, sorry, four major lows to spike down. Uh, so if we did break, I mean, technically speaking, that would be the measured move and that's actually at around low 3,800. Um, as you can see, we're kind of moving like molasses right now as you know, typically is, is indicative of weakened action. But hey, uh, we'll have to chew through this support in the, you know, we'll, we'll have to chew through this support on the mean, uh, you know, on the downside. Um, and I have it kind of as a zone between about 39, sorry, it's actually really 3940 and 3920 if you want to get super granular, which does meet up with the daily 21 and, um, and then also the four hour uh, 89 right here. Um, so Yes, when it comes down to the lower time frames, you know, I would be a little bit more. I, I mean, technically, yes, this is in there. We are price action slowly moving in that direction. Um, but like I said, I really don't like wedges. Even like even when I do get a rising wedge in a bear market, which would imply a more bearish resolution, I uh, just. I always feel I always feel dirty if I if if I try to play one of these. Um, for the most part, I'm just a support and resistance player, actually. You know, my strategy is quite fucking simple, man. Buy on support, sell on resistance. <laughs> Nothing more complicated than that. Um, so yeah, that's why I was selling the. Uh, 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 that's why I was selling calls right here, and I sold some puts um, before I went to bed last night to actually kind of pull that in. But it's looking like um, if this actually does play out, I'll be putting. Uh, I'll be selling some spot against it as soon as we break down below thirty nine fifty ish area. So and also understand that when I when I say some of these numbers, like sometimes I can take a little bit of shortcuts with how I express it. So you know, instead of like saying exactly. 39, 3940, it needs to break that area. So 3950, just because I don't, you know, it's an easy round number. Um, anyway, so let's go through the medium time frames. Uh, I do, we, we did look at the four hour stokes, which are down. Four hour RSI is trending down. Four hour jewel also giving the sell signal, as we said, uh, but that was yesterday. Uh, actionable yesterday eight hour jewel got the perfect top so far uh, eight hour are sorry eight hour stokes are very weak and could very easily cross back down right now uh, right at the edge of the bearish control zone so that's going to be kind of the next insight uh, rsi is more on the bearish side i would say we are trending well below the exponential getting right into the neutral zone and uh in overall you know, I would say that that is taking on a little bit more of a down undertone. Uh, ten hour right here. Ten hour is basically basically the same shit as the uh, as the eight hour, except ten hour does look like it wants to open back down on the Stokes, uh, actually formally getting into the bearish control zone. And uh, ten hour RSI trending well below the uh, well the well below the exponential. So I do like that. Ten hour chart is actually quite powerful uh, in Bitcoin land. And uh, next target would be um, thirty nine thirty actually according to this guy. Um, right in the midst of this next block, which I'll actually put in a nice, uh, I'm going to put in a nice blue box, the blue box of potentially prosperity. But I'd imagine that if we do, if we do come down around there, you know, like likely does break down and we get the, and we actually do get that move down to uh, low 3800s, uh, 39, 3920, 3930 is going to be absolutely critical. This, this blue box territory is absolutely critical because that is where the daily, uh, 21 is coming in around. So that's kind of like, you know, the, how do I want to relate this concept? Um, you know, on the daily 21, I always look at that to get like a general perspective. If we're above it, I'm more or less leaning to the upside. If we're below it, I'm more or less leaning to the downside. Uh, so right now, while the lower time frames are looking a little bit droopy um, with, you know, with Bitcoin still being above it, I wouldn't be necessarily bearish like on a medium time frame or anything like that. Uh, again, I want to remind myself that this is a weekend. So weekend action is quite... Uh, quite uninspiring um usually mostly hunts but uh this one actually does kind of look like it wants to move anyways because it is a weekly and we will be closing another weekly dildo later tonight at uh, at 8 p.m eastern time i do want to talk about this really quick and this is not my favorite way of doing things this is not something that i would put too much weight on but it is a little bit interesting that uh bitcoin 
Bitcoin could very easily have a chance to print uh, the fifth weekly green dildo in a row uh, tonight. I mean, obviously right now it's red, um, but you know, if we just closed above like 3920, if we had like literally 10 to 10 to 15 ticks higher than, uh, than, than current price action, it would be green. Uh, we'd have five green dildos in a row, which we have not done that since literally April of last year. Uh, we had one, two, three, four, five, and then it was like all the lemmings just walking up a cliff just to, just to parachute down and fall flat on their faces and do like one of those Looney Tunes, just explosions. Um, you know, in the uh, in the bull market, we have plenty. We we had plenty of those, uh, but in the bear market, you know, the last one that we had was really just a major trap. Uh, and of course, we will actually have a chance to do that again. So, you know, just historically speaking, for the last year, in an overall downtrend, it's just. <laughs> Statistically speaking, not very likely, I suppose you could say. Uh, more importantly, what I do put a shit ton more weight on, and sorry, we shouldn't even talk about that silly hearsay shit. That's crypto Twitter type, type bullshit. Let's talk about some actual analysis. And uh, in the 200 exponential, I do consider this a test. Um, yes, it is. You know, we did come about like 50 bucks, so 50 bucks shy of formally testing it, but it doesn't need to be perfect, especially on a weekly total time frame. $50 is, you know, is 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 nothing. I consider this one or these two dildos, these pair of dildos down here, a test of the 200 simple. But obviously those, you know, those were still like, what, 50 bucks away as well or like 20 bucks away. Close enough is close enough is what I'm trying to say. And the fact is, is that for the past four months, four or five months, the 200 exponential has been our resistance to the upside. For this formation, the 200 simple has been our support to the downside on this formation. So that's 4,100 uh, 4, resistance and uh, 34, it's actually going to be 34.50 by end of day today uh, when we get our next tick most likely. Um, for a support. And as far as the next sort of macro leg goes, there's not really a play to be made until, you know, until Bitcoin either opens and closes a weekly total above the 200 exponential to the upside or just closes a uh, closes a weekly total to the downside. And, you, and, and, and understand that I made a distinction there. I need to see both an open and close above the 200 expo exp exponential to be looking for a more momentous move into the 4000s. Whereas to the downside, if we just close below the 200 simple uh, at 34, I would be immediately bearish looking for a pretty big flush down into the mid to low 2000s. But more importantly, more than anything that I'm going to say is that regardless of my opinion, I, I can have my opinion that I don't believe that the lows for Bitcoin are in. I believe that Bitcoin, you know, likely does go lower. But as a trader, I will not take that trade until the pink 200 simple moon average actually breaks to the downside, which again is 3425. Um, by the same token, I will not, you know, really be taking any sort of big directional longs until we both open and close a weekly little above this uh, purple 200 exponential on the weekly. At that point in time, I would be looking for a more momentous move into at the very least 4500 and probably 47, 48 at that. Uh, uh, at, at, at that time. Jesus Christ, man, can't talk. Uh, while we are here, uh, let's look at uh, weekly RSI. Weekly RSI is what really makes me concerned because weekly RSI, I mean, this, again, I'm not an RSI first type person, but the RSI first type people will tell you that this is a bearish setup uh, or likely will tell you that this is a bearish setup. Um, again, RSI for me is like the last of, it, it's like one of the last of the, of the indicators that I use. I mean, I put more weight on it than like fucking TD sequential and shit like that. Uh, definitely more than trolling your bands and volume profile, but um, but as far as like what you see on my screen, typically speaking, it's, it's probably the last. And, uh, and you can see that we built up a support from July of 2018 to November of 2018 before the fall of 6,000. And that trend line is coming in right here. And that's coming in right at the edge of the bearish control zone, which we've basically gotten up to right now. Not only that, but the reason why this RSI is, in my opinion, quite bearish is because, and holy moly, look at that new GIF. Oh, man, that's so awesome. And good to meet you. Oh man, it's really hard to it's really hard to read your name, but but hey, pleasure to meet you, my friend, and uh, and I'm sure that we will have some great talks in the future. Um, anyways, uh, the reason why this is not such a good RSI in the current posture is because we have not broken out of any sort of major resistances, aka the 200 exponential on the weekly at 4100, um, and this RSI is rising up uh, very erect, very erect, while price action on the weekly is essentially flat. And when I say essentially flat, I mean we have not broken any major resistances, and we are just consolidating right now. So RSI is able to float up to the edge of the bearish control zone, so bulls are using more and more power, getting less and less way, not breaking any major resistances and in fact still on the rsi need to eat i mean can't haven't even tested this area just yet and i would actually be really looking for a formal test of that area but you know to me this this, uh, this is kind of like what's called it's the rsi people call it resetting the rsi and um 
and basically just allows for like another major down move where where on that move you might you might be able to get some divergence or something like that uh, but for right now you can see that this is uh, well and far away and uh, I'm not I'm not a huge fan of that setup so <clears throat> You know, uh, that would certainly be on the more bearish side. I do want to say for a second here on the weekly total time frame, as the 10 simple is coming in right around 3,700. If Bitcoin were to fully break down right now, that would be the next major support I'd be looking for uh, right around 37. Um, according to the weekly, but we're going to go look at some other charts, which uh, disagree with that uh, in just a second. Um, however, weekly stokes are interesting to me as well because they are getting right to the edge of the bearish control zone with, again, the close coming later tonight at, uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So putting on the trend lines here, we actually did have this declining trend line, which had been holding in Bitcoin ever since May of 2018 on that run to 10,000. And more importantly, we did have another trend line coming in right here, right at the edge of the bearish control zone, which Bitcoin had been living under ever since February of 2018. And uh, right now, we're actually going to have a chance to to get above it with the closure later to, uh, later today at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So depending upon how we actually react intra, uh, intraday, um, I want to see if this area actually does give some resistance. So, you know, it, you know, it can get into the neutral zone or sorry, a little bit into the neutral zone and still not kind of like set it off. But I'd imagine that if bears are going to attack, it probably does happen from somewhere right around here as uh, as they'd want to maintain this control that they've been having for, again, over a year now since uh, February of 2018, according to the weekly Stokes. So I'm going to take that back off, get off that. Um, and go back on to Mr. Bitcoin. And uh, sorry, actually, let's go on to CMEs. So again, I I really like the CME charts because I think that they're more clean and clear and they and I I think that they're just completely 100% uh, easier to read. Um, more importantly, the CMEs do not trade on the weekends. So that's also why I don't like trading on the weekends because C because 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 of more professional venues are not being traded. Um, uh, the the unregulated venues like you know your BitMexicos, your Binance's, your Finexes, whatever the fuck it might be, get to run the rule, uh, get uh, get to run the world, and they can do all sorts of flighty floaty price action. Which um, <clears throat> you know when the bigger boys are not playing the game, which I, you know I think most people kind of take the weekends off. It's it's a lot easier to fuck around with um, you know f uh, fuck around with price action, do some stop hunts. Uh, the books are going to be thinner, so it doesn't cost as much money to perform those sorts of hunts. So that's you know one of the big reasons why. And actually, uh, I think it was Bitwise did a big expose and I, I believe it was either Barron's at the Wall Street Journal yesterday uh, talking about that talking about all the all the you know fake or or, or falsely reported volumes on basically all the unregulated exchanges um, in comparison to what they had so uh, definitely check that out um, I don't have a link to it right now unfortunately but I believe it I believe it was in Barron's if you want to check it out. Uh, anyways, while we are here on the CMEs, uh, a lot of things to be aware of. We did put in a massive, what do you want to call this? A long-legged Joji dildo? Do you want to call it a spinning top dildo? Do you want to call it a bearish engulfing dildo? I don't care what you call it. Typically, a sign of bearish reversal uh, right here on Thursday. We have not gotten follow through, more importantly. However, when these open up later tonight, the big question is, where to spot where is spot in relation to the CMEs when CMEs open at 7 p.m. Eastern time? Because that would be the next trade that I'm looking for. I will obviously be asleep, but you know, you know, I'll probably set an alarm just to just to see. But here's the thing: if spot is trading under where CMEs closed on Friday, I'd be looking to sell on the gap fill, which is right around 39.65. Uh, if we have the vice versa situation where spot is trading above where CMEs closed on Friday, I'd probably be looking to buy 39.65. Um, on the gap fill, but with looking at this, we do have a few things to be aware of. As there are, as there is bearish divergence on the daily total time frame right here, actually, and a clear rejection of the bullish control zone as well. Um, and typically, I want to see a test of the 21 after that, and that, and the 21 is actually all the way down below 3900 at 3880. Uh, so that would obviously have insight continuation to the downside and come in confluence with you know that first initial more bearish situation that we just spoke about. Also, on top of that, we do see daily Stokes getting a little bit tired, and I'm gonna imagine that we do when we do get the new tick when they open up later tonight probably does bring it down um unless if it opens way up we'd have to open like i mean like if, if we open up above 39 90 4, 000, then yeah it, it will open back up uh daily jewel not really saying too much uh is getting near the resist you know uh, an area of resistance that or sorry an area that has been providing resistance for the past year uh each and every time that we've gotten around this dotted trend line at the uh at, at, at the 80 marker uh that has called major tops this was your top at 10,000. this was your top at uh, 8400 and uh this was your top a little bit uh uh, about a month ago, uh, right over here. Um, <clears throat> but again, you know, I need to see, I need to see, pre well, actually, funnily enough, that, yeah, it was this run right here, which was done on a weekend. Remember, on the weekend, price action floated up and then crashed down. 
Um, didn't get too much continuation off that, however. So, you know, just another thing kind of saying, hey, be, be aware. Um, so while we are here, I do want to put on the drawing tools as well. Uh, get rid of that and state, hey, the CMEs are quite clear because Right now, this breakage of this formation, which this is a formation that had been, you know, calling the tops for one, two, three, four, five times over the course of the last four months uh, since since late November of 2018, we actually broke out of it um, uh, late, uh, early last week, right? And technically, we came back and retested it on Thursday right here, and so far, so good. But look at the volume on this breakout. Whenever I see volume like that on a breakout, I get very, 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 very apprehensive because it reminds me of something like this one over here, which people saw this major breakout. But look at the volume on the actual breakout at the top. It's non-existent. It's non-existent when everyone was looking for this, you know, the, the falling wedge that's going to bring us to 14,000 or whatever it might be. Um, all price action below 10,000 is, is a distraction for, you know, 14,000 or some shit like that. What, what was it saying? Um, Anyways, more importantly, uh, this formation, which you know, I, I think a lot of people have eyes on, also coming in right around the 21 exponential and the uh, 382 Fibonacci retracement, as you can see. Um, if that, if we were to come back down below that, this would be a swing failure pattern, and I would consider that. A, I mean, basically, the better word for that is a hunt. Um, and if we were to come back down below, I'd be typically speaking, when you do get those moves, you see a very, 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 very violent uh, counter trend move to the downside of the range, which would be all the way down around here, right around the 618, which is going to be actually meeting up with this rising support. Trend line uh, that's been calling the lows since uh, since middle of December of the past year. We had, we're actually uh, dog sitting a couple little cute Pomeranians right now. So Elsa's walking around uh, yeah, <laughs> with them like little babies. It's kind of funny. Um, anyways, uh, so yeah, you know, if 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 we do break this le this level on CMEs 3900, I would become immediately very bearish. Uh, and this is what I was talking about before because if we do break 3900, you know, technically speaking, just from looking at this structure, I don't really see too much holding you up until you know 3650, 3700. But really, uh, I would be looking for that move down. Personally speaking, I would be looking for the move down to 3550 uh, and retest the 618. Um, you know, it's not going to happen in a snap of a finger, but it would happen relatively, uh, relatively fast in the, in the general context of this time frame, a daily, which, you know, that could be a week, right? Um, okay, cool. So we spoke about that. Let's go, let's go look at a uh, GBDC, GBDC, quite interesting as well. Um, our other, our other venue to trade Bitcoin for a more, in a more professional setting. You can see here that, uh, GBDC, again, a much easier and clearer chart to read. I need to get rid of some of these, um, some of these alerts, uh, they're not too not too appropriate right now. Uh, but more importantly, the 89 exponential did call the top a few days ago. Uh, obviously, this is not trade on the weekend as well. And uh, just basically double topping right here. Same thing as this area right here. Your highs in January, right at the 89, and uh, reversal dildo and down. And same sort of thing right here. The 20, uh, the 21 exponential coming in right around that critical uh, 646. Sorry, four. Oh my God, it's 465 area. Which, if that area breaks, I'd be looking for another move down at the very least to here at 230, 229, or sorry, four, oh my god, what? I am dyslexic as fuck. This is so embarrassing. Uh, 429, there you go. Uh, 429, which would likely equate with spot somewhere around that 3650-ish number, actually, uh, given the current premium. So, overall, uh, this is a rising wedge, and that would also have a measure move to be made as well um uh in the current way that it is forming out and where that be pointing down towards yeah down around here actually right around four uh almost four dollars even which would probably put bitcoin right around that uh, 3550 um retest of the major support trend line that's been holding this bitch up so 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 getting back on to mr bitcoin i do want to talk about a few more things We're, we'll go through some higher time frames uh, stuff as well and some more fundamental stuff um in general but back onto the lower time frames uh hourly hourly does look like it wants down Ali Stokes are down. Ali RSI making its way into the bearish control zone. Uh, two hours, same same thing. I mean, two hour two hour Stokes uh, headed back down. Two hour RSI getting comfortable as well. Not good. Um, and two hour actually kind of like looking like it's it's hanging on by a thread. Uh, we see the same sort of support coming in right around that 3920, 3930ish area right here by the by the 200 exponential and 200 symbol, which actually have been extremely good uh, recently. Um, in calling, you know, in in, uh, in calling uh, uh, major supports and major major resistances. Um, so yeah, all right. I think that covers up most of what I went, was most of what I went, wanted to talk about there on Bitcoin. Let's actually go over a few more things while we're here. Uh, daily jewel is quite interesting as well because the daily jewel, and this is not the first and, and foremost way to use it, but each and every time that it's gotten to the eighty marker. 
with the light blue, it actually has called major tops. I mean, first and foremost, this tops uh, starting with the top over here in December 2017 at 20,000. Uh, you probably remember that. This this was your double top at 12,000 in February. This was your top at 10,000 in May. This was your top at 8,400 in uh, in August. This was your top at uh, 7,400 in September. This was your top um, late February. Not not a huge move though, to be fair. Uh, the first time that it's not been a huge move. Actually, more importantly, and in uh, this guy also getting right around that range as well. So. Another thing, just saying, hey, be be cognizant of what this has done in the past. Um, I do want to spend some time on the three-day total time frame uh, Stokes as well, which I believe have officially tested this trend line. Let's see. Oh, yep, it's right there. <clears throat> You see this trend line again originating from the same area essentially uh, th uh sorry the uh the 20,000 high in december 2017 calling the highs uh, once again right here in may at 10,000 calling the highs again right here at 8400 in august and then once again we are getting very close and comfortable to this area which tells me hey be you know be cognizant of this because it has been valid for the past over a year um calling the tops it doesn't mean it can't change around, but uh, but I'd want to be more, you know, I'd 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 I I would overall want to be more um want to be more lenient coming into something like that. Anyways, uh, spending some time on the three day little time frame, you see you you basically see all the higher time frames kind of agree with that critical thirty nine hundred level as the uh, as a support. Um, what else am I getting from the three day little time frame? Not all that much. Uh, still kind of just kind of oscillating between the bearish control zone and the neutral zone for the RSI. Um, this was the first time that we've actually, I mean, the, a few weeks ago was the first time that we actually even got out of the neutral zone for the first time in a while. Uh, as you can see, I mean, we, we've really been finding resistance around this area since um, February of last year, again, you know, for the past over a year. I do want to check out the more obscure ones, like the four day, five day, see what we're coming in around. There's, if there's any sort of confluences, uh, five days, five day actually kind of looks interesting. We did regain the 377 exponential. Where does this next one close? Um, yeah, and another couple days actually. So not, not, not too, not too interesting. Uh, a little bit of bearish divergence if I really wanted to split hair, I suppose. Uh, but not, not anything crazy. What about the five days? Do you see anything here? I mean, there's, there's always going to be a chart for an area, right? And that's kind of the that's kind of the dubious thing about technical analysis. You got to be honest with yourself on like what you're really looking for. Um, but five, but as you can see, the five day chart we're actually still at at resistance right now. Uh, the 21 exponential has been holding price action back, and the 21 exponential has been damn good. The yellow moving average, I should say, at calling the tops for the past uh, year. It has gotten above it a few times, but usually when it gets above it, it's not too long after that when it starts crashing back down. All the same areas that we spoke about before: 12,000, 10,000, 84, 7,000. Um, and then once again, we're right here. Uh, the last time was actually a pretty swift rejection, by the way. Uh, also be considered a rejection of the uh, 200 exponential in the weekly, in my opinion. Uh, Five-day RSI, a little bit of bearish divergence, I suppose you could say. Um, but yeah, I don't really have, I don't have too much I'll say about it other than that. Uh, more importantly, I do want to be, uh, you know, I, I would be leaning a little bit more to the downside, uh, you know, testing this 3940-ish uh, area right here. I know people are going to call this some sort of a head and shoulders. I'm curious what, you know, what sort of measure move they're going to be looking at just to understand what people are going to be thinking. Um, yeah, it'd be a measure move all the way down here to the 200 simple on the four hour total time frame, right below 3900. So that actually would break structure um, of the more preliminary structure. But how many times have we seen these wicks just get bought right right back on up? So, you know, I, I, that's why I don't really like playing the lower time frames. I want to see like a 3900 break or a thir sorry, 3920 if you want to get more granular with it. Um, you know, as 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 long as we're below 4000, this rising support trend line that uh, that we broke down from retested right here as resistance is, you know, we're, we're below. It would be more bearish in the more immediate time frames. But action has been pretty lackluster, you know, either which way. Hard to make a living uh, trading these 20, 20 to $30 moves uh, if that's all you're going to get, you know, once every, once every few days. So that's why I like paying options in this one right now and doing a Forex for spot trading. Um, anyways, okay, so spoke about all that. Uh, let's go check out the, the Crypto Fear and Greed Index, which we're actually taking out of 44 right now. So people are getting fearful once again. Uh, we were spending, uh, we spent like the last week or so, or, or more than a week above the greedy zone, uh, as you can see right here. Sorry, let me just make sure that this is fully visible. Yes, okay, right, right above my head right above my head right here. Uh, this is all in the greed zone above a 50 marker, which above 50 has called tops in the past. Uh, you know, again, same sort of areas, 12,000, 10,000, 8,000, uh, uh, somewhere around 7,000, breakage of 6,000, and then once again, get into this area. So to me, that is, you know, it's, it's, it's certainly relevant. Uh, not my first uh, port of call, but it does kind of agree with all the other things saying, hey, be careful here. 
uh, datamish uh, looking at longs and shorts we do see the same imbalance the same ratio actually that we saw let me make sure that you can see this yes you can uh, we saw this we were actually seeing the exact same ratio that we saw before the breakage of 6,000 with about a little over 24,000 open longs versus a little over 20,000 uh, open shorts just kind of verify that let's go back on over here to our actual short uh, longs um, chart and in November right around the breakage we were right here uh, right around yeah about 24 and a half thousand uh, shorts, of course, we're right at about 20,000. This this was your breakage of uh, 6,000 right here. You can see that we're right around the same zone. More importantly, again, every time that the shorts have gone into this red box territory has has emerged major, major dumps. Uh, same areas, 12,000, 10,000, 84, uh, seven, well, this one was 70, uh, 73, sorry, 74, uh, breakage of 6,000. Then once again, we got in here, but we haven't really seen the reaction just yet that I'd be looking for. So... You know, it's it's. I, I suppose it's still viable. I, I wouldn't change my opinion on it until I f like legitimately see a counter move that I'd expect from this sort of setup. But uh, I'm also not necessarily seeing the exact sort of you know same reaction that I want to see. So, you know, worth considering. Um, but you know, it works until it doesn't work is is typically the same. So 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 we've gotten on that. We've gotten on that. Um, I think I think it might be time to to talk about some higher time frame uh, bullshit. So first and foremost, I'll cover up the uh, the bullish scenarios because, well, feeling generous today, and uh, let's talk about um, let's talk about the more bullish scenarios. So if Bitcoin were to both open and close a weekly total above this 200 exponential moving average right here um, around 4,100 once again, which has been getting all of our highs for the past four or five months. Uh, then I would switch my like my, my higher time frame outlook to to slightly bullish, uh, looking for a move more importantly into the into the mid to potentially even deep 4,000. So 4,500 becomes extremely likely, and uh, 47, 4,800 becomes pretty 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 likely Cer uh, certainly very much uh worthy of discussion um but more importantly while we're here you know that would be my first initial thing from switching from generally bearish sorry uh well as a trader neutral but uh, opinion wise generally bearish to to neutral to slightly bullish however it would not fully switch around my full opinion uh when i the the point at which i'd actually get fully bullish is if we could just close a monthly dildo above the yellow 21 exponential moving average, which is all the way at 5,200. Again, from where I come from as a market maker in equity options on New York Stock Exchange Arca, I would use the 21 exponential on the monthly to judge if something was generally bullish or generally bearish, uh, depending upon its posture around it. And right now we are living well below the 21 exponential. And uh, while Bitcoin is quite young, um, it has actually been respecting this pretty damn well. Look at the last market cycle, which Bitcoin broke down below the 21 exponential. That was some more aggressive downtrend. And then once, it, and then more importantly, once it broke back above, that was literally the perfect buy, in my opinion, because then you have momentum going on your side. So opportunity cost wise, it was it, it was a very it was extremely good trade. I mean, also just by the numbers, it was you'd literally be be buying at $300 before the move to you know, 20,000. <laughs> so uh, so not bad. Um, but we'd actually have to, you know, we'd actually have to get above there for me to, for, uh, for me to, you know, switch to a bullish from a macro time frame perspective. Uh, more importantly, while we are here and while the month comes closer and closer to the end, not only are my programs not gonna be on sale anymore, but more importantly, perhaps for you is the 50 exponential is going to come into a visual contact and that's coming in right around where? 3900 actually a few ticks below to be exact um and this is why that 3900 level is so fucking important because if bitcoin does close above the 50 exponential by end of month which again we have what five six six days maybe six seven days i would be i would treat that as actually breaking uh, as actually breaking the 200 exponential on the weekly pretty much and i'd be looking for that move into the mid to low or sorry in into the mid to the high 4000s actually so 4500 becomes extremely likely um however in the meantime while we are here uh if bitcoin does break back down below 3900 and we do and more importantly if we close the monthly exp uh, the monthly dildo below the 50 exponential i would be incredibly incredibly bearish as this 50 exponential has been holding back all these dildos providing the impetus for resistance for the past one two three and working on a four, fourth month and keep in mind we broke this 50 exponential for the first time in bitcoin's history in december of the past year 
And on top of that, we are coming close to a new month, which means that we're going to get another tick on this. And also all of these moving averages are going to move over, you know, one more degree, meaning that the red 10 simple moving average is going to have a legitimate chance to literally cross the 21 exponential to the downside, which to me would be incredibly, incredibly bearish as that would, as, as if Bitcoin were to, sorry, this is in confluence with Bitcoin closing below the 50 exponential. If it closes above, then I'd be actually be looking for maybe even a test of the, of the 21 exponential to the upside possible. Um, <clears throat> so, and that's again uh, above 5,000 right now. Uh, but if it did close below the 50 exponential, which is around 3,900, then I'd be looking at these two moving averages to kind of tell me to kind of give me insight into where this consolidation is likely getting ground down into. And when you see a lower period crossing the, crossing the downside of a higher period, especially these two, uh, that typically does typically does in, uh, indicate a trending movement about to occur. And uh, this area, all, all you know, all the whilst right here looks like consolidation to me. I think it's a lot easier seen on a lower time frame. This the whole price action, I would say, is very. Uh, corrective in nature, the more recent price action could be construed as constructive as long as we remain above 3950, um, 3900, maybe you could say that. Um, but the, but the whole, uh, as verified by the volume signature and the, and the structure, I would say corrective in nature, which if this is going to be a consolidate, which implies that it's consolidation, and if this is going to be a consolidation while these two moving averages approach each other, well, that would tell me that the that the consolidation is likely to be resolved to the downside. But again, remember that all comes off the contingency that Bitcoin actually does close this next monthly total below 3,900, um, below this 50 exponential. That'd be my next big uh, big signal for myself to actually you know be taking trades. Of course, overall, if 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 and when this formation were to break down, my next target would be the uh, the eighty nine exponential somewhere down around twenty five hundred a share. Yeah. Um, but of course, like, just like with the upside, as as a trader, not an analyst, but as a trader with accountability to my actual account, you know, someone who needs to make a fucking living. Um, I would I, I I still wouldn't be taking that trade really like like the legitimate trade until until the 200 simple on the on the uh, on the weekly breaks which again is 3450 ish area. Um so yeah uh and of course the the most bullish thing that Bitcoin could do would get would would be to get back above 6000 there'd be zero reason from a technical analysis standpoint at that point to uh to be bearish. Of course that's you know well and far away. You're probably going to know beforehand as well. Um Anyways, I think that covers it, it up for that. Let's go back here to the weekly and now talk about the more bearish situations from a long-term perspective as, again, this comes with the caveat that Bitcoin needs to break this pink 200 symbol moon average to the downside. Again, right around 34. It's going to be coming in around 34.25 uh, uh, at the end of the day today. Let me just make sure that I'm actually recording. Okay, good. That's been a problem in the past, so I'm, I'm happy that it's actually recording. Uh, but if we were to break that pink joint, it's a moon average to the, uh, to the downside. I would be looking at that monthly target. Not only that, we have plenty of confluences over here on our Bitstamp chart uh, with regards to this blue box territory, which rounds out the area between 2300 and 2600, which is rounded out by these uh, past historical horizontal trend lines coming in from June 2017, one of the China debacles um, of a couple years past. And more importantly, also the 886 Fibonacci retracement coming in right around this area, which is actually where Bitcoin did bottom out in 2014. 2015 mark cycle right over there and you can see if we do throw on the volume profile there is massive high value notes being thrown down right around this area and more importantly the last high value node for this current uh consolidation comes in right around where 3450 so if we were to lose that one there's very little stopping this baby from you know mid to low 2000s very similar to what we saw above 6000 when this high value node was lost right here it was a rip through the price action down to high 3000s uh, again relatively quickly in the context of this weekly dildo time frame but weekly dildos take you know one week to populate so it really took one two three four five weeks to get to the low um so you know, just uh, you know, understand the relevancy with times. Um, okay, so yeah, that also talks about that. Uh, BLX index also showing you know the three seven seven on the weekly coming in right around that twenty six hundred range, kind of rounding out the top of that blue box territory. So. Um, a lot of things in that, you know, a, a lot of tentacles also suggesting that that would be the target I'd, I'd first be looking for if Bitcoin were to break down. Are there are there more targets to the downside if Bitcoin were to like fully fall apart? Absolutely. I mean, again, when it comes down to, to, to judging major mark cycle lows, it's not about having your secret sauce telling you, your secret formula telling you exactly where the, where the bottom's going to be at this exact price point. No, what's actually way more important is judging the reaction off these areas because the way that a major mark cycle low gets put in is typically by a by by an entity with extremely deep pockets you know billion plus dollars probably and uh, when they step in the market 
they're going to leave waves and they know that they know that the retailers know that and the retailers know what to look for as well. The internet's available now. So most people, most relatively educated people can, can figure it out. And, uh, and more importantly, you have to, we have to understand the perspective of that major entity who is looking to set in the floor and their perspective is to buy as much as possible, right? Cause they're, you know, I mean, it's, they're quite literally going to force the floor. So financially speaking, they're going to be motivated to, you know, to, to make the most money by buying the most. Well, how do you do that? Well, first you have to create the illusion of complete, utter, and uh, an utter loss of hope and despair. And then you buy it all up, which typically forms in your chart, something like this, something like this, where you get a major spike in volume, uh, coming off of a very, 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 very violent week. I mean, th this weekly doodle right here traveled like, you know, 60% in a week. I mean, that's, that's, pretty incredible when you really think about it just imagine that if bitcoin were to do that right now you'd see bitcoin go from here down to 1500 in one week i mean and then back up to, to 2500 that's it's insane it's fucking insane is what it is but hey that's bitcoin that's why we love it it's magic and money anyways uh more importantly with it um what was the point that i was on i was talking okay yeah about about capitulations um <clears throat> you know, uh, when it comes down to capitulation, it's more, it's more of an emotional feeling than anything, because remember it's, it's, it's about that, that major entity getting in their bags essentially. And they can create that illusion two ways. They can do it with a more violent way that we just looked at, which is the more obvious way or the other way that it can, that it can typically come about is with, you know, is with a prolonged sideways market. I mean, if this market were to go sideways for the next five years, like gold or silver, uh, people just get bored out and they capitulate that way. But the same action does occur. So, you know, looking for those sorts of signatures are important. And, um, and, and that's why I'm, you know, yes, I can, I can say, yeah, we have, you know, I see potential bottoming areas from 20, you know, around 2,500, 1850 and 1000. Uh, I don't care until I actually see the reaction off those areas, if it even does get there. And it, that also doesn't, you know, I mean, not to mention what if Bitcoin were to, you know, take out uh, the 200 exponential to the upside. Well, then I don't want to be bearish at all. I, I have no reason to be bearish in the medium to, in the medium to high, or medium to low time frames. In the high time frames, you know, the, the case diminishes as well. If you get above the 21 on the monthly, I, I have zero interest, <laughs> no interest. Um, so that's kind of the that that's kind of what I want to get out. Uh, just shows a lot of the time when people start talking about that sort those sorts of things like Bitcoin's definitely going down to one thousand and there's no ands or bits or buts about it. It's like, well, you can't speak properly, dude, and not say, okay, well, you're right. Um, but more importantly, it just shows that that person is you know naive and doesn't really have an understanding of how these levels really get put in. You know, I've actually seen this stuff in in person, uh, being on the floor of New Stock Exchange. Arca, you see major fucking orders. I mean, I mean that exchange isn't even like a major one. I mean, it, well, it is it is a major one, but like the super major ones are New York Stock Exchange, like the straight up New York Stock Exchange, and then uh, and then SIBO, which I did trade above later. And, uh, and, you know, we see, we saw major, major fucking, uh, major, 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 major orders. I mean, you know, just money that's hard to conceive of. Uh, so those people quite literally do, do move the market. <clears throat> Anyways, um, okay, so we spoke all about that. Um, we spoke about downside targets. We spoke about upside targets. Um, spoke about what would make me bullish in this market. We spoke about what would make me more bearish as a trader, breaking below that. Spoke about the lower time frames. Okay, good. We spoke about the longs and shorts. We spoke about the crypto fear and greed index. Okay, let's get onto this now. Let's start talking about some more long-term type stuff. So let's talk about why at this point in time would I still not be convinced that the low is in, even with Bitcoin holding these lows so far for the past uh, four or five months. Well, like I said, this price action right here does look does look uh, corrective to me, um, and and more importantly, when I do look for the things that, uh, that I typically look for on major market cycle lows, I just don't see it with Bitcoin. Um, so let's actually take off volume profile and let's put on a few indicators. Let's put on well, actually no, let's let's first just talk about this in general. Let's go to a weekly. And the first major thing that I look for is major volume being done at the actual low. Well, first things first, this major volume spike that we're seeing is, was actually done on this dildo, which actually broke the 200 exponential to the downside, which Bitcoin had never done really in its history beforehand, by the way. And more importantly, that major volume tells me that that is where the momentum is, 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 is going. And then after that, volume dies down as price action kind of contracts, meaning AKA consolidation, I would interpret that likely as more bearish. If I'm looking at a major volume spike, I want to see it on the actual low low for capitulation if it's going to be that one just like over here when you see this major volume spike it's on the actual low it's not on a few dildos below that i mean on this dildo right here we spent another one two three four sorry uh three 
yeah, three weeks going lower and then four weeks to bounce. Um, so people talking about that, I don't understand that quite uh, uh, quite clearly um, where they're getting that from. Uh, I think I think it's just like this this sort of meme that says high volume down capitulation. It's that easy. It's like no, it's not actually. Um, more importantly, uh, the reaction off the current low is extremely lackluster. I mean, this is uh, this is we, we've had we've had about 18 weeks now and bounced up a, a total of 23 and a half percent from the current lows. And let me just confirm that uh, we have spent um, off the current since since we put in the current lows: uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen weeks. Um, in 23 and a half percent. I mean, that's very reminiscent to what Bitcoin did in this area right over here, not to bring up the fucking fractal gods, um, but basically Bitcoin getting up about 23 and a half percent over the course of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, obviously this, this cycle likely to take longer as Bitcoin, you know, has a higher market cap, more people involved, all that good stuff. Um, <clears throat> but you know, in past examples of capitulation, we saw major bounces, uh, not just on a, like, I mean, I remember that was done over, what was it? 14 weeks, 15 weeks of price action. Let's go down to a daily and let's see what some examples of capitulation I've done in the past in just one day, just one day, 23 and a half percent. Remember that was the last one in just one day, 40%. Okay. One day, almost fucking double. What we saw before. Uh, let's go to the time before that. Uh, there was actually a good example right here in February of last year of what capitulation can look and feel like, and we bounced up what about thirty about thirty percent in one day as well. Obviously, did not end up being the ultimate low, but more importantly, you know, consider one day thirty percent versus fourteen weeks, fifteen weeks, twenty three and a half percent. Not fucking good enough. Um, can we get some more examples, perhaps? I mean, we can go back a little bit further over here. Uh, this one was quite interesting as well. Forty uh, percent in one—you know—I'm I'm not going to go to a daily, but in one week, forty percent again versus twenty-three and a half percent in fourteen weeks. Uh, not good enough, especially with the way that Bitcoin does it. And again, when it comes down to judging, you know, market cycle trends. Um, Typically, there are very consistent principles that govern all major assets because, you know, at the end of the day, it's it's humans trading these things. So we're really look, just looking at charts of human emotions, human imperfectness, human irrationality, human exuberance, human fear, human greed. Um, all these things represented in a chart formation. And that's why, you know, assets in different asset classes can, can kind of come from the same governing principles. You know, whether I've been looking at equities, commodities, Forex, or magic unit money, mm, those principles are still typically pretty similar amongst them all. And then, they, and then the particular asset will have uh, its own personality within that governance. And this is kind of how Bitcoin plays it out. So the so the volume, the reaction, uh, both not good enough. The time spent at the low, also not good enough. I mean, going back down to a daily, Bitcoin spends literally, <clears throat> literally one, two, three, four days within a within like less than a percent of the lows. I mean, remember the last few examples that we have capitulation. You know, this one, uh, one day, forty percent. The time before that, one day, what was it like fifty percent? And the time before that, you know, was what was another like you know, crazy things. So, so time spent at the low also a uh, little bit uh, shaky. Bitcoin does typically not give you four days to, to decide to buy the low. It gives you about 10 to 15 minutes um, in my experience. <clears throat> and uh, what else do we want to talk about? Uh, let's talk about, okay, so we, we, we spoke about volume. We spoke about reaction. We spoke about time spent. Let's speak about uh, the return to the low as well. So Bitcoin over here, as you can see, returns to the low to retest it within about five to six percent right here uh that's also very inconsistent with the way that bitcoin puts in the lows because remember how do major market cycle lows be put in well major entity enters in the building and he says i'm buying here and fucking try to stop me the time before that was right over here bitcoin never gets within 36 percent of the low again Keep that in mind. Bitcoin hasn't even bounced up 36 fucking percent from the lows currently uh the time before that right here uh, Bitcoin never gets within about, uh, where's this next low? About 30, 35% on, on this next spike. Yeah, about 35.5%. Um, again, not consistent with the way that Bitcoin plays these things out. Let's bring up some indicators now. Uh, let's put on the good old uh, the good old uh, historical volatility rank. Shout out to Ballyport for this one. Uh, I actually do want to put on the percentage as well, but we'll, we'll stay here for a second. It's going to give us about the same read. Uh, more importantly, the, the, the historical volatility rank has actually been perfect in calling major tops and major lows. And if you're not familiar with, with volatility rank or, or, or what this means, it's basically a mean reverting indicator that tells you about the mean returns over, an, you know, over, over, uh, over a given amount of time 
period of time. I'm doing a terrible job explaining it. Basically, it oscillates between zero and one. If it's one, it's telling you that the move is likely coming to fruition. Uh, basically, you know, for example, it, it ticked a one when Bitcoin was at 20,000. It ticked a one when Bitcoin was was down here at 6,000, you know, telling you about major extremes. When it gets really, really low, it tells you that a move is likely to, to occur. Anyways, on the drop down to 3,000 so far, we got up to a 6.6, which barely even above the median, which not that, you know, or sorry, the mean, which is not that, um, not that impressive. Uh, and like I said, this has been perfect on major lows and even, and sorry, and also major tops. Of course, it doesn't tell you about direction. It tells you about, you know, this move is probably getting exhausted. Uh, so perfect right here, right here, gave a beautiful buy right here, beautiful buy right here, beautiful buy right here, beautiful sell right here, beautiful buy right here, beautiful buy right here, beautiful sell right here. Um, beautiful buy right here on the prior low beautiful sell right here. So again, you know, these sorts of things have been damn good in the past and we are not getting in that way right now. In fact, the historical volatility rank would be suggestive of consolidation first and foremost, as you do see this start to like kind of hump out and the closer and closer that we kind of get to this zero read, the more and more likely that that price action is to explode out of this consolidation. Again, not telling us about direction, but with that's what the other technical analysis is for. Uh, the time, you know, when we actually broke down below 6,000, you know, the historical volatility rank was basically unreadable. Um, at multi-year lows down here. And that's kind of what I'd be looking for for the next major move. If Bitcoin is going to get to, you know, a market uh, momentous shifting area, I'd want to see it get very, 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 very low, even if it is going to break to the upside, which by the way, the last time in 2014, you can see uh, before this run up, you see the historical volatility rate extremely, extremely low. Anyways, the next one I'm going to bring up is a little bit more controversial right now, but I'll look at it anyways, because it is the MBT signal. So no, and, you know, I played around with this a lot. Here's the thing. <clears throat> Here's the thing. The MVT signal, regardless of it, of whether it can be gamed or not, has been perfect over the pat. You know, in the history of Bitcoin, it has called every top and every low perfectly. The inputs have not changed, and the same sort of fuckery has still been existent. So, the fact that it still worked with regards to that is worth considering. So I would still run with the potential that it, that it, I actually should be looking at this still. And you can see right now that Bitcoin is getting quite high. If you're not familiar with this, it is the network value divided by the daily transaction value. And that's why it's quite interesting to me because it's, it's basically a, a, a fundamental indicator. Um, and usually when it gets above 140, it, it signals major, major selling opportunities. Uh, the, the last time that we did that was in the bull trap of 2018 right here. The time before that was in the, was in the, was in the high of 20,000. We even got a buy signal down here, um, on the low of 6,000. Again, telling you about, you know, it's kind of, kind of like a form of capitulation, uh, bit major buying opportunity right here before the bull run from 400 to 20,000 major buying opportunity right here at 150 or whatever it was uh, all the way to 20,000 a major sell opportunity right here on the bull trap major sell opportunity here over the uh, parabolic blow off top I mean we can go further back than that of course some buys along the way as well and a sell and a buy right here um, on that market cycle so the fact that Bitcoin is getting extremely high right now in price action again is still not breaking any major areas uh, I do see divergence on the MVT signal with regards to price action. MVT signal is making a higher high. Price action is making lower highs. Um, similar to what we saw in 20,000, you know, MVT signal uh, doing the same sort of thing. And, you know, we're seeing, we're seeing divergence between the two. And more importantly, we are seeing Bitcoin get in the same sort of areas. So I do want to bring that out. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, just another thing kind of, you know, on that uh, uh, uh on, you know, on the side. Um, what else do we want to talk about? Let's talk about uh, let's talk about some woo nomics over here, which I've been really enjoying. Um, the Bitcoin price models, which uh, another thing from Willy Woo, the master himself. I really want to get him on um, I, I get him on a live stream so we can all so we can all pick his brains because he's I think he's a very unique and creative person who has like actual genuine insights in the market rather than someone who's just. Never mind. We won't get in that discussion, but I you know I I I, I, I think he's really awesome. Um, He's so great. Uh, anyways, uh, all of these lines that you see down here are representative of different fundamental markers um, represented uh, where my curse currently is now, as you can see. And more importantly, you don't need to know what each and every one of them are for this explanation to work. But basically, uh, in the past prior mark cycles of Bitcoin, we see all of these, all you know, all of these lines converge on the lows, right? They all converge on the lows. 
and then you know Bitcoin puts in a low. So we have uh, we obviously have this first one right here, then we have this one right here, then this one right here, and now in, with this one in question, we haven't really seen these guys converge. We haven't really seen them them converge. In fact, if we zoom in, you'll quickly notice they're actually diverging. Um, even with this week's move to the upside, uh, they are. I would say I would say yes, they have they have actually diverged from last week, uh, getting farther away from each other not not converging on each other not uh, not closing on each other which is what you typically see on major lows so again worth considering also notice that uh this dotted trend line or sorry th uh, this dotted line to the downside which is representative of the average market cap has actually been pretty damn good at calling lows in the past or around the lows uh would be coming in right around that 2500 number just saying uh so it is interesting to me um uh, uh, that we do see it around there uh, obviously each and every time that bitcoin bottoms out it does not hit that it has at some at some times but other times it's gotten you know relatively close uh, but something worth considering um more importantly this dotted trend line to the to the top side actually has called all of the all of the tops of Bitcoin perfectly. And that is the, what I want to, how do I want to uh, explain this? It is the top cap. It's just the average, it's the average multiple, uh, sorry, it's the average market cap multiplied by 35, but it has been getting all the tops perfectly. I mean, going all the way back one, two, three, four, and where that be coming in around, well, around uh, about 50,000, which I'm actually going to show, and that'd be 50,000, uh, sorry, uh, around uh, 2020, it looks like. I'm not going to show that I have some confluences with that in my own analysis, um, but back on to the bitcoins. Uh, let's now talk about some more long-term, uh, some some more long-term ideas. And now I'll get super bullish because I am a long-term believer in Bitcoin, and uh, and this is why. This is one of the big reasons why. Putting on my drawing tools on the BLX index. This is the matrix. Um, in each in each and every each and every one of these dotted trend lines represents a support trend line for a parabolic market cycle. Each and every one in Bitcoin's history of this first one in 2010, 2011. This trend line gets broken in 2012, and that becomes the highs, the governing factor of your 2013 and 2014 market cycle right here. Then we create another support trend line anchored in 2011 and 2012. That gets broken in the 20 uh, in the 2015. Sorry, 2014, 2015. 15 mark cycle right here becomes the highs of your next mark cycle in 2017 2018 then we create another support trend line for this uh, uh for this past one anchored in 2015 and 2016 that gets broken right here on the move down below 4,000, which also broke the 200 exponential on the weekly and does that become our governing factor going higher in the future perhaps and let's just let's just kind of extrapolate this out so um so 2020 what would be our you know what would be our potential governing high at around uh, 13,000 but what if we just went out one more year well now it goes all the way up to 25 and what if we went out just another year to 2021 now we're now we're at that uh, at that 50,000 or a little bit below 50,000 marker what if we go out to 2022 um or sorry 2023 let's just take it out let's just let's just accelerate this bitch more uh whoops can't even can't even see it uh, Jesus Christ, man. Uh, now we're in the two hundred thirty thousand dollars potential highs. So these these have been calling the highs pretty damn well, and you do see that they get a degree less um, each and every time because, well, you'd imagine that as Bitcoin becomes more and more popular, these sorts of major price swings are going to become you know less and less uh, less exaggerated. So yeah, uh, just want to talk about that. Also, uh, while we are here, some timing, some potential timing things uh, we can speak about are these solid trend lines uh, right here in the 2014-2015 mark cycle uh, in relation to the 2017-2018-2019 right here. But basically, this first dotted trend, or sorry, this first uh, uh, solid trend line holds in the consolidation after the parabolic blow off top, leading into your bull trap. And then, more importantly, once Bitcoin breaks out of it, it never breaks it back down to the downside again. In fact, it bases off it once spaces off it twice and puts in the ultimate low right here well we have a very similar trend line representing the same sort of thing in 2017 2018 with this parabolic parabolic blow off top consolidation below this trend line it breaks out into the bull trap of 2018 we saw the same signature on the MVT signal by the way let me remind you and then ever since then when we came back down where do we base off of on that uh you know on that first drop down to low 3000s the same trend line so if we were to actually walk it down and you know come up with those price targets, um, or if we if we had price targets, uh, you know we could we come up with a potential uh, a, a potential time and date for it. So <clears throat> you know if you are looking somewhere around uh, you know two thousands or, or high or high eighteen hundreds, you know that could be April. 
or sorry, uh, 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 that could be like uh, late April, something like that. Um, if you're looking at, if you're like the super bear camp looking for 1,300 to 1,000, that could be, you know, June, um, potentially uh, below 1,000 if you're in that camp, you know, August. Uh, you can see that this can take quite some time, but also of great importance is this trend line right here, which holds in the, which, which basically governs the whole consolidation after the parabolic blow off top, right? And you'll notice that, that once we break out of it, that was actually the beginning of your bull market in 2015, 2016, leading on to the run to 20,000 from $300. Well, we can make the same trend line in 2018, 2019 right here. And if we could actually just break this guy to the upside, you know, could that be the early warning that Bitcoin's turning bullish? Perhaps. Look at where it's coming in around. Right around the uh, right around the weekly 21 and the weekly 200 exponential, which would be, you know, about 43-ish area. So, uh, so if Bitcoin did break that, you know, I would, I would be getting more, uh, I, I would certainly consider being more bullish as well. Uh, of course, though, if, if we were to like pick out, you know, dates and times for things, um, you know, I'd be looking, you know, we, I mean, like it's that, that's where it gets a little bit more difficult. It's like, okay, so we're going to bottom out here, then come over here and then break it out. It's like, I, that's a little bit more difficult to do. I just, I just be cognizant of it going forwards more importantly. Um, so yeah, a lot of people have been bringing this up to me saying that, uh, you know, we're right at the, we're right at the linear trend line, uh, that Bitcoin, you know, uh, that uh, the Bitcoin put in at the, at the top. I mean, yeah, you can also look at it like that. Sorry, not, uh, not like that. Uh, but basically like this, what are they, what are they doing? It's something like this. Yeah. We're right at this trend line, which has been, uh, which has been harassing Bitcoin ever since, uh, February, 2018. I mean, or are we above it. This is why I don't like diagonal trend lines going all the way back. It's like, okay, if I just if I just move it one degree, that's going to account for like three hundred dollars in price action. And there you go. It's like, oh, we perfectly hit it. It's like, well, I wouldn't be. I I, I don't like making trade. I don't like making trades with an error of de with an error of degree or sorry a degree of error of like three hundred four hundred bucks. <laughs> Doesn't really work for me um, or my account value. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I guess you could say that we have some resistance right there as well. Um, anyways. Uh, let's now go over the other top shit coins. Uh, let's go, let's first check out Mrs. Litecoin. What's she doing? Mrs. Litecoin. Ooh, giving up a little bit of a rally now. Uh, yes. Oh my God, man. This has been perfect. And I, I don't say that. Sorry. That comes off as a little bit arrogant, but I don't mean to say it like that. But, uh, but Mrs. Litecoin doing, I, uh, a lot, a lot of what we talked about over the last few days, basically just grinding this topping area uh, as the oscillator starts to start, uh, start to switch around. We see daily stokes coming down. We see daily RSI still having bearish divergence and now officially getting rejected by the by the exponential and getting kicked out of the bullish control zone. And like I said, major bearish divergence, one, two, three, four stabs and down. Um, I would be looking for likely a move down to test the, the, the 21 exponential, which is actually at 56 and a half now. Um, and I, but I wouldn't be getting too bearish with this one just yet, even though it is an ascending broadening wedge, which is typically a bearish result pattern. Uh, the daily doodle golden cross is well on its way. Um, if, if, if Mrs. Litecoin can just hang above $56 for the next few days, she will get the golden cross. And I don't trade, I don't trade bearish against fucking golden cross, put it that way. Um, so it's going to be absolutely critical to see what the reaction is if Mrs. Litecoin does come back down and test $56.5. If the reaction is good off the 21, I will interpret that as a golden cross being played. If the reaction is not good, I'll interpret it as the golden cross likely to be a fake out, you know, gathering in all, gathering, in, gathering in all of the over aggressive traders who don't know how to trade these sorts of things and uh, and make, you know, because everyone's going to go crazy on the, on the Twitters and whatnot talking about golden cross on Mrs. Litecoin. Bye. It's like, okay, smart. Um, and then everyone's going to try to like front run each other. But, uh, but by the same token, even if it did get golden cross and it did come all the way down, I still wouldn't get bearish on it. Even if it did break it until it breaks this area right here, 52 and a half dollars breaks 52 and a half dollars. Yes. I'd be bearish as fuck. I'm Mrs. Litecoin going all the way back down to 44 and a half, um, most likely and probably even 40, uh, 40, uh, 40 and a half even. Uh, but overall, this uh, this th this ascending broadening wedge is getting damn damn mature. Look at the volume signature on this guy. It is uh, it is it's it's ready. It is ready. Uh, we will we will be seeing a move on this relatively soon. Um, obviously, the resistance to the upside is right around sixty three and a half. That's also the daily three seven seven. Very important. Also, this horizontal coming in all the way back from uh, September of past year. Um, so all also it is pushing down. All indicators do say bearish, except for the uh, except for potential daily uh, golden cross, which I would be I would be respectful of. So I, I I you know I wouldn't get too bearish on it. It's certainly it's certainly the strongest of the uh, of the bunch, you know, of of like the main of, of like the top uh, mark caps. Uh, Mr. Buterall, uh, the opposite, uh, certainly the weakest of the top caps. 
um, getting rejected right at the 10 simple yesterday and still kind of wedging itself in between this critical resistance right around 143 and a half and critical support right around uh, 138 now rising over time. Yesterday was 137 and a half going down to a lower time frame to really get a good idea of what's going on here. You do see, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's very sluggish, but we are holding above the 200 exponential. And how many times have you seen it? You know, have you seen this like come down to a major support, just kind of spend, spend enough time there and then just pop right on back up, you know, all the time. So I would be cognizant of, uh, of, of, of weekend Barty action. Uh, four hour stokes are down and trending down, by the way, actually, as well. You do see this. There you go. Um, four hour RSI, even having a little bit of bearish divergence right here, uh, but need to see this area break first and foremost. Uh, for Mr. Buterall, if 137.5 can break, I would be looking for that move down to like 127. Uh, 127. Uh, this is also the 382 Fibonacci retracement, which we're currently uh, resting on right now. Actually, it's coming in a little bit lower. I apologize. Uh, I, I, I got that number wrong for the support. It's 136.5. Um, around there. Also the daily uh, 50 exponential. Um, we do see daily Stokes coming down as well. We do see daily Jewel doing what? Mm, I wouldn't consider it's right in the middle, neutral. Uh, daily RSI getting rejected by the exponential, but mm, right in the neutral zone. I, I would say it's neither bullish nor bearish. A little bit more on the bearish side, I suppose, um, but nothing too crazy. Anyways, back on Mr. Bitcoin. I think I'm going to start to wrap up this video. Or do we want to go over some shitcoins today? Yeah, let's go over some shitcoins. Why not? Let's go talk about BNB. BNB coming down. Get, uh, got right to our resistance area and down. Very similar to business like when I'd be looking for another move down to uh, $14 and a quarter. Um, if that area fails, then I'd be looking for a move down to uh, 1290 uh, Zcash, the real Bcash, is back in its descending triangle. As long as it's below $16.50, I would be overall bearish on it. Bcash. Uh, Bcash looking a little bit more resilient, actually uh, using the tw using the 89 as support. As long as it's above uh, 161, I'd actually be looking for another move towards uh, 176. Uh, Tron Cash, uh, Tron Cash, ooh, Tron Cash actually having a very strong move yesterday. Uh, so we spoke about this yesterday, or sorry, a couple days ago, how once it come off the 200 simple, prob probably going to balance there, and it did. Um, coming up to almost two and a half cents. Uh, I'd be looking for two and a half cents to be major resistance. If two and a half cents is taken out to the upside, then this baby actually can really run. Um, but for right now, mm, we do see daily Stokes, uh, daily Stokes snaking back up. I, yeah, I, I do kind of like the setup actually. Tron, Tron has been doing its own thing uh, as well. Uh, Neo Cash, uh, major resistance, 960, major support. $9 even, whichever one breaks first, probably just going to follow the rest of the market, really. Uh, did break this trend line the other day and retested it yesterday and still rejected from it. Uh, EOS Cash, um, same thing, actually. Broke the trend line the other day, retested it uh, yesterday and rejected. Uh, support right here, right around 360 even. If that area breaks, we'll be looking for another move down to 345. Um, where's my Ripple's Cash? Is Ripple, has, a nip, has a nipple been freed? No, he's once again resting on the support. God damn it, free the nipple! 30 point, uh, it's now coming in right around 30.9 cents. This is rising over time. Remember, yesterday it was 30.8 cents. Uh, if we can actually confirm below this area, which we are below all major moving averages now, I would be looking for that move down to 29 cents. Uh, looking very droopy, Mr. Ripple's nipples. Uh, 29 cents actually extremely important as well, because if 29 cents does break, if we see 29 cents break, I would be looking for a move down into the lower 20 cents region, uh, high teens perhaps. Uh, but right now, I mean, he needs needs to hold the support trend line. Otherwise, this formation is extremely mature, extremely extremely mature, and uh, likely to burst. Um, so yeah, Monero Cash. What's Monero Cash doing? Uh, getting rejected out of top trend line right here. Actually, a little bit of a hunt to the upside and back down. Be looking for another move um, at the very least to uh, what is it, 52 and a quarter, and then probably uh, 51 and a quarter. Um, it does look like it wants some more down. Daily Stokes down. Daily RSI bearish divergence at the last top. Uh, let's go to Stellar Cash, the last one on the list. And Stellar Cash coming down as well, getting rejected exactly where we spoke about yesterday at uh, 11 cents. And I'd be looking for, at the very least, a move down to uh, 10, point, uh, 10 and a quarter cent. But really, this is starting to shape up as an actual legitimate head and shoulders, which would have to have a measure move down here to this horizontal right around nine and a half cents. And this overall thing is in a, is in ascending broadening wedge. We called the top in it a, a week ago, right over here, and now coming down daily RSI now trending to the downside as well. Daily Stokes down, as you can see. So let's get back on to Mr. Bitcoin and wrap this bitch up. As it is time, and Mr. Bitcoin actually has bro technically broken the rising wedge to the downside. I would be I'd be respecting it as long as we are you know below this rising trend line, which is currently at around like thirty thirty nine ninety. So. Got a lot of work to do. Um, four hour just kind of closed a little bit weak as well. Uh, but the more preliminary support is uh, 3940, 3930. That's more tangible as far as I'm concerned. Technically speaking, that rising wedge that did break down 
technically does have a measure move at uh, low 3,800. Like I said, though, I would be taking this one step at a time because 3,900 is so much more critical from the CME perspective, which is just not trading right now. So it's unlikely to give us resolution. Um, but uh, but but uh, but more tangibly speaking, um, as long as we are below the 200 exponential on the on the 12 hour, below essentially 4,000 and above uh, the 21 exponential at uh, 3,950. You know, I can see this as just uh, just consolidation. You might have hunts here and there, but until we actually break below or break above one way or the other, when it could be getting too damn excited, <clears throat> it does look like it wants to break down. I would say uh, I'd certainly be more on the more on the bear side right now. But like I said, I need to actually see price action move first. So that's going to do it for this morning. Hope this one finds you well. Um, again, want to be wishing you well on this beautiful uh, Sunday morning, and uh, take care.